Joshua, uh, as a biologist and a believing Christian, um, how do you deal with the possibility, many would say the probability, of extraterrestrial life for sure and very likely extraterrestrial intelligences? That's a great question. You know, in terms of extraterrestrial intelligence, we're talking about like human-like minds, like intelligent aliens on other planets. Some people think that's really likely, but the fact of the matter is we haven't actually seen any, right? So it's more like we have an N of one. We know that there is humans <laughs> out there on Earth and we might be hopeful or we might be pessimistic, but we don't really know if there is intelligent life. I mean, I, hope, I think we should look and we should be curious. And some, some Christians will say, because the Bible doesn't talk about it, it doesn't exist and it's somehow anti-Christian. I think it's a little bit of a silly sort of idea. I mean, it's not just Christians who have said this, uh, with the supposed likelihood of intelligent life, some people said, well, you know, a lot of religious beliefs are, are kind of disproven if they really do exist. I think the reality of what's going on is if that there really was an intelligent life that we found, it would really raise a ton of questions, both in philosophy and in theology, that, man, wouldn't those be really interesting questions to get into and look at? And so that's the way how I think about that and how, how that discovery or lack of that discovery is going to influence us. And I think it would in a lot of ways. Uh, one of those ways is how we even think about origin of life, right? Right now, um, in the same way that, uh, that the origin of humans is this one-off thing that only happens once in human history, uh, it's the same also when it comes to the origin of life, the first cell. And we have a hard time reasoning about it in a once, the cases where we just only know about one thing happening in, in all time. Now, it's possible that there's, uh, when we go and we, we study enough uh, in, in Mars, we're going to find out there was an independent of origin life there, or maybe in Venus there's, there's, uh, there's actually an you know, independent life that's up in the clouds of Venus, or maybe in Titan we might find it, or maybe in another solar system we might find it someday. In those cases, I think what would be important about that, it would be show that the, that the origin of life or life arising is a lot more likely. <laughs> Than, um, than it could have been. It could have been really, really rare. It could, it could have been that the rise of life and then the rise of humans are a true fluke, that, um, that we might even wonder if there's natural processes that can, can really fully explain it. Um, but if we started to see other types of life arise, or, um, other types of intelligence, then I think that, that, that's, that starts to, to indicate that maybe yes, this is a lot I, more I, likely. I think we need to uh, uh, distinguish between those two transitions non-life to life, and then life to intelligence. Um, and then the second category really has an A and a B, intelligence with consciousness, human-like awareness, or without, because you can imagine intelligence without consciousness. Yeah, so these are all, like I would say, grand questions that are great contingencies. And because we only have ends of one, yeah, really, yeah, we don't yeah. have a solution. Well, one of them might have an end of two. So I think the first one is, like, why is there um, life instead of just non-life? Right, right. right? The other one is why is there consciousness instead of just unconsciousness? Yeah, I, I, I would put a, a, a little bit of, a, a, of an intermediary intelligence uh, uh, because sure. you, you, you logically don't need a consciousness for intelligence. Sure. Uh, and maybe you can have consciousness without intelligence, although that seems less likely, but that's possible. Well, so intelligence it's in that sense. Well, okay, sure. We can talk about intelligence yeah. that way, then consciousness, and then like the human mind. Yeah, or human-like yeah, mind is right. kind of like... There could be other kinds of intelligences and other kinds of, of minds. That's right. So, so the only so, one of those where we might have more than one end so is the idea of other minds. Like a great example that's often brought up is octopi. So yeah. it's pretty clear that octopi have an intelligence, but it's very different than the mammalian brain. Right. Um, and while, you know, all vertebrates kind of trace back to, you know, a, a single radiation from, you know... Uh, from some sort of like fish kind of coming out of the water, right? Uh, something's going, I mean, you know, octopi arise in a different way. So that's kind of like an N of two. We might have two there. Yeah, and, and some uh, materialistic uh, scientists, um, some of whom my, my friends that I've talked to, really believe that uh, 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 oct oct octopuses or octopi are a, a wonderful example of intelligence without consciousness. Now that may or may not be true, 
but it, but but that is a position that yeah, we, they we take. don't we don't know. It's but it, it's very foreign to us. And it's anyways. very foreign for sure. So it's really clear from mammalians or from mammals like us uh, and, and humans too. Even the rise of the human mind that arises in a deeply social context. Yeah. It's very communicative in really key ways. And, and in fact, that's how language evolves. It's this idea of communicating complicated ideas, right. right? But what's weird about octopi or octopuses is that they're very solitary. Yeah. <laughs> they don't actually know any yeah. of their kids. They <laughs> right. kind of spawn them and they go off. They don't actually have culture in that sense. Yeah. And so it is really, it is a very, very foreign sort of uh, consciousness if it is, or maybe it's not. A, a not uncommon position is that uh, life is common in the universe, but intelligent life is extremely rare, if not human, uh, um, human being an N of one, the only example. Uh, so the likelihood of life, I mean, when the, how common it is, I mean, we're, we're all speculating at this point. Uh, I, think, I think it's a little bit of wishful thinking. I mean, I, I mean, I'd like to share it too. I'd love to see other branches of life, right? But we haven't actually seen any evidence of any of them. In, in the end. And so we'd want to hope that they're there, um, but we may not find, we haven't found any of them yet. And it's also not really clear uh, how far away we'd even be able to see them. No, it's, it's certain, I think we can be fairly certain that, that life might arise, if, even if life does arise in another galaxy, it's just too far away for us to ever see. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we can see now certain exoplanets with the with the light of their host star shining through their That's atmosphere. all within our galaxy. Yeah, within our, our galaxy. galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and it's, it has to be very close to be able to see an exoplanet. Yeah, so even within our galaxy, we can't see all the planets. Know. So it's like this tiny little street oh, light it's, we it's have. A very small. It's this part, tiny street. And right. we know how vast the universe right. is, so right? That gives arguments for why that life must be abundant if you have, uh, you know, a two trillion galaxies, each with 100 billion stars and at least that many planets. And a, a, a fraction, you have the Drake equation. I mean, I mean if you well, so play any of that out, it this looks is where like my mathematical life. sense really kicks in. So I think what we're dealing with is a very large number, like an unimaginably large number, especially if we don't just think about the observable universe, but the unobservable universe. Yeah, too. Well, that, that's, that's gigantic, that's, right? No, you, but that's like such a high number. It's so outside um, uh, the normal way how we're con uh, thinking. That's very hard for us to think about. Times what I would say is a very very tiny number, yeah, uh, which is how likely it is that, that right. life arose on a given planet or what have you. You still get very large numbers. Well, how small? So we have so what we're dealing with is a very tiny number multiplied times a very very large number, <laughs> um, and mathematically that's undefined. It's not actually very large or very small. It's undefined because you really have to have like a very good understand well, how small this is versus how large this is. Well, we is. know how large that is. We, we know how large that is it, it, to a pretty good approximation. But we don't know how small this no, is. No, we don't know how small it <laughs> is. Like, that's the problem. I agree with that. And I so, agree. so we're, we're left in a place where, you know, especially we don't, we don't even know how process-driven it is versus how much uh, of a stochastic fluke it is yeah. at different steps, right? So, you know, cells are fairly complicated. Life is a, a complicated thing. Maybe it's very process driven to the point that, you know, it's inevitable in certain conditions. That's a possibility. We've far from established that. Yeah. Um, the other possibility is that, that it might be a natural miracle. It really requires like things kind of falling into place in a way that, that that's just stochastic yeah. and, and in a surprising way. And, and that's why we haven't found it anymore. That's another possibility too. Yeah. And, and that, and you're, and you're, you're you're using that as li just life per se, any kind of life. Yeah, any yeah, kind of life. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, I, I do think. But there's, there is this view that that life is not that rare, so that this is the small the small end is not as small as you think, and we know what the large number is. And recently, we know that the number of planets are at least the, the same number. We didn't know that a few years ago. Yeah. We had no idea. That, that, uh, how many planets there are? There's now, about as no. many planets as there are yeah, as uh, there stars. At least, at least as many planets as there are stars. Uh, you know, uh, uh, two trillion galaxies now, and and uh, um, and uh, and and each galaxy might average a hundred billion stars. And so, you know, you're at uh, you know ten to the ninth times ten to the twelfth is ten to the twenty-first, and you know maybe order of magnitude. I think ten to the twenty-second is uh, is an order of magnitude that you could say for the number of planets percentage of those that are habitable. I don't know, pick, 
you know, and maybe 5%. Yeah, so, so I'm granting that it's a very large number <laughs> that you're multiplying, but it's also a very small number. And we don't so, know what that small number is. We yeah, so then you're kind of all left with an undefined thing. So yeah. I don't think anyone can really have confidence. They might right. have hope, they might have desire, they might have fear, yeah, but, what, what, but they what, can't have confidence. No, I agree, I agree with that, right? but what, what, what I find fascinating is why distinguished biological scientists have told me that they have more confidence of finding life, even, even with your analysis, which, which I, I agree with, than finding the, the jump from life to intelligence. So intuitively, I would have thought the opposite. Yeah, I, I kind of, so if you're talking about intelligence, broadly speaking, I think, like remember, we have an N of two at least with intelligence. <laughs> and maybe yeah. even a little bit more than that when you kind of consider uh, how intelligence develops. I, I, I think intelligence definitely, even if it can't be fully explained in terms of emergence, I think there's some emergence to that. I, th I think. I think I'd probably be with you on that one. I, I think that we don't really know about the origin of life, but I think if life arises, uh, I think we have enough data just because there's yeah. been more than yeah. one example, but that, that see, it's see, more likely. That's, that seemed intuitively obvious to begin with, but I, I have met people who know more biology than I do and have thought about this very intensely and, and have argued exactly the opposite, that intelligence is the, is, is, is the, is the greater leap than, than to life. And so I think what it what it really means we really don't know anything. Yeah, we we we, we don't. I think I think it's like I said it would be interesting if we do really discover a new tree of life on earth like maybe in a in a you know event somewhere or or on a, on another planet that would change the computation. It would mean that in like this little tiny street light where there re we really didn't expect to necessarily see life because if there is life on Titan and on on Venus and it wasn't from Earth that got seeded there. If that yeah. really is true, then I think we could we can say that there's probably life everywhere. But if there isn't, I think we're it still was, kind of left with that, that question. Uh, we don't really know. Yeah, the la the lack of evidence would not be evidence that it's not prevalent, because our, I mean, we'd only be testing three or four other places with any confidence: Venus, Mars, Titan, a couple of moons, uh, oceans of moons, or something. Uh, but so if we found something, then the the idea that life is is ubiquitous would would have a high probability but if we didn't find anything we'd still know nothing we couldn't say that it's not yeah and i think even if we did find life on mars for example i think one of the really potentially counterintuitive but i think interesting aspects of the discussion afterwards would be you know did life on earth was it seeded from mars oh, right, or was right. it seeded from there so i think it's not just about finding life on mars yeah, correct because right now there almost certainly is with all the rovers <laughs> we sent there yeah, yeah. <laughs> to... right right but right. if we did find life that was ancient there, um, there's been like this historical, you know, exchange of material yeah, between yeah, Earth. Yeah. I mean, is it really a different, is it really a different tree of life? You, you if it might, is, that might, would be exciting. You might be able to discern that from the, from the, the molecular structure. We might. Um, I mean, especially if we found, you know, a strain of it that we could grow, right? right. <laughs> um, but with that line of reasoning too, even if we found another tree of life here on Earth in an exotic place, that, that, that would be interesting too. That would also help. Right now, it still seems that all life on Earth still kind of traces back to a, a common ancestor.